This is a tutorial on finding cross-site scripting vulnerabilities in a web application um, for educational purposes, of course. So we're going to look for a vulnerability in one of these intentionally vulnerable applications that are here for testing purposes. So I picked a wasp victim. Um, I guess we'll play this number guessing game. Basically, we're going to look for an input field and we're going to use Burp Suite to see what how it deals with dangerous characters or encoded characters characters that suggest that you could input an executable script and have it reflected back to the user's browser from the server um, maybe they are validating their input maybe they're sanitizing their output the server i mean um, so let's just see. Let's find an input field and um, just put in something normal and make sure it's reflected back to your browser. Otherwise, um, it's not really going to be possible to do a reflected cross-site scripting attack. So um, let's just do this. Okay, so in the browser we can see that the input that I entered was redisplayed on the browser. So um, let's take a look at that request. Here, here's the input. And let's look and make sure that this input was reflected in the response from the server. Oh, yes it is. Um, so if we were an attacker, we would want this to be some sort of piece of JavaScript that maybe steals your session cookie or, um, or displays your session cookie in an alert. Um, so we are going to try a bunch of different characters here that are usually within an executable script and see if the server is filtering input and how they're doing that and then we will um, go from there so let's we're going to use intruder for this we'll send this request to intruder and this is the position where we want to input a script or some characters that are often present in a script to see what the server does with it. So I don't want all of those tested. This is the only input I want to mess with. Okay, for payloads, here is a list of characters and terms that are often in um, scripts. So you have your script tags, maybe it's an iframe, maybe it's an image with script tags in it, um, opening and closing brackets, that sort of thing. Ways to jump out of the code that's being displayed and have your code interpreted and executed by the browser. So. Um, we'll just upload this list and it's going to perform 98 different requests. Always keep this in mind. If you are pen testing someone's server, you don't want to interfere with their business practices and send 50,000 requests. So you can just calculate the number of requests that will be sent by doing number of positions, which is one times number of payloads, like items in your payload, um, which is 98. So I'll be doing 98 requests. Um, let's go ahead and see what happens. OK. 
Okay. So the first thing we notice is all of these 200 okay responses. Um, that means, okay, this is just the baseline request with nothing submitted in this area. Um, and we get 200 okays for all sorts of different dangerous characters like script tags, um, URL and HTML encoded versions of these dangerous characters. So what you want to bear in mind is the length of the baseline request. Normally, if we had gotten some sort of error, the length of the response for an error message is usually, I mean, it depends upon what your baseline request is, but if it's far less than the length of the baseline request, it's usually an error message. I think I've seen um, their length in bytes is like 300 to 500 characters or something, depending on the error message. But so we want to look at length and status. They are all 200 okay. And usually if your length of your response is a little bit over the length of the baseline request, so let's say 1928, this usually indicates that the input you submitted was reflected back. This is slightly more, meaning that the response probably contained um, this term in it. So this term was reflected and maybe not sanitized. So the only way to check, um, let's confirm and let's just put a, a little piece of JavaScript in the input that we used. So I guess we'll go back. And um, we'll just see if we can get a, an alert to pop up uh, using a JavaScript and see if it pops up. If it does, the server is most likely not filtering input at all. And that is um, a vulnerability. So let's just do... Okay, uh, what this should do when I submit it is have an alert box that contains the cookie for this session. Um, this is a common thing that's stolen. Um, it's not exactly realistic for the attacker to have an alert pop up printing your cookie. They would probably have it sent to themselves, but this will be proof if it, uh, if it does pop up that the attacker can indeed execute script through this input field. Ooh, and there it is. So if we go back, oops, if we go back, we can have a look at what the cookie was, oh, that we were submitting. Seems like this, and let's compare it to what popped up. Those are the same. So we successfully printed our session cookie um, and this input field is vulnerable to cross-site scripting, uh, basically meaning the server is vulnerable to cross-site scripting because it's clearly not filtering its input. And that's about it.